Welcome to our study of relational database management systems. In this series of lectures, we'll cover material found in the book, Fundamentals of Database Systems, 6th edition, Belmazri and Navath. Hopefully my pronunciation of the author's names was at least close. Now let's get started. Our first topic is databases and database users. Traditional database applications are those that we meet every day. When we buy products from the almost any retail business, traditional databases are being used. Looking up at a part at the auto parts store, checking your grades at school, each involves searching and or manipulating a database. In recent years, some whole new breeds of database systems have arrived on the scene. Multimedia database applications, for example, are different from the traditional database applications in the structure of the multimedia objects and media where the multimedia objects are stored and retrieved. Multimedia data is diverse with different characteristics. Because of the audiovisual nature of multimedia data types, they are usually complex data composed of other data that can be complex. Eigen and others indicated that multimedia objects are multidimensional and hierarchically structured and can have some relations among them. For example, the image data does not have temporal behavior because there's no time associated with it, while video has both temporal and spatial behavior because the image sequences of the video should be displayed in order and in some dedicated time. Geographic information systems store and analyze maps, weather data, satellite images. They can include everything from maps of sewer lines to maps of roads, analysis of foliage to analysis of fauna. Let's take a look at a couple of these. Here's a geographical database example. It's a foliage report. It covers geographical information for a whole range of places and it talks about the different seasons and when and where the plants are being raised. Here's another one here. This is the uh, coastal and marine protected areas database and it has information about a number of marine locations and coastal locations. So this is just two examples of geographic information systems. Another example of a database application is the data warehouse and online analytical processing systems. These extract and analyze useful business information from very large databases. They support decision making by upper and middle management. Then there's real-time and active database technology, databases that deal with information and processes that have to be immediately and, and quickly responded to. A database is a logically coherent collection of data with some inherent meaning. A random assortment of data cannot be correctly referred to as a database. A database is designed built and populated with data for a specific purpose. It has an intended group of users and some preconceived applications in which these users are interested. Databases come in all sizes and complexity. You might have a simple database to keep up with recipes or perhaps a database to keep up with your Christmas card list. A database of even greater size and complexity is maintained by the Internal Revenue Service to monitor tax forms filed by U.S. taxpayers. If we assume that, our, that there are 100 million taxpayers and each taxpayer files an average of five forms with approximately 400 characters of information per form, we are obviously talking about a large and complex database. There are numerous massive databases in operation today. You are able to log into the IRS website 
to interact with a large database that allows you to download forms and other information that you're going to need. Let's take a look at it. And here we have the IRS website at www.irs.gov. If you'll take a look here, you see a number of forms that are available for you. So come tax time, if you need a form, you don't have to get in your car in the last minute and rush over to a IRS uh, office. You can simply log in and download the form you need. They have other information out there that allows you to access videos and other information to assist you in filing your taxes, along with a number of other tools that the taxpayer can use from time to time. The Social Security Administration has a similar service where one day you'll be able to check up on your retirement benefits. Amazon, for example, uses a database that contains data for over 20 million books, CDs, videos, DVDs, games, electronics, apparel, and other items. The database occupies over 2 terabytes and is stored on over 200 different computers called servers. About 15 million visitors access Amazon.com each day. As a matter of fact, I bet you have and use the databases to make purchases. So let's go take a look at the Amazon side here. Voila, Amazon. A da their large database includes music, video, electronics, games, books. It's incredible the amount of data that is being stored on this database. Netflix is another service that provides access to over 100,000 movies. These last two examples in particular demonstrate some of the differences in the requirements of multimedia databases from the traditional variety. Let's take a break here to go check our knowledge on the material that we've covered so far. Now with these videos, there will be a magic word that you can submit as soon as you leave the video, but before you go to coursework. And that magic word will be worth five bonus points on your coursework check your knowledge assignment. For this episode, I'm just going to give you the magic word, database. So input the magic word, then go check your knowledge, and when you're ready to come back, Come on back for the next installment of the series of lectures on databases and database users.